Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let me thank all of you for your time, sharing your time with us. Uh, I have, still have a number of meetings to complete before the evening is out. But I'm sure the team here would have gone through with you some of the opportunities in Guyana. <clears throat> Our country, as I speak to you today, is not only, and we say this in a very humble way because we understand what struggle is, we understand what managing without resources looks like and feel like, we have done that. And we now have this great opportunity of transforming the country with the revenue from oil and gas. The country is going to be ranked among the top five producer of oil uh, and, and gas. Um, we're going to go up to maybe 1.2 billion barrels before 2027 per day. 1.2 million barrels per day before 2027. 2027. But what is more important is where do we see the economy in its totality? We don't see oil and gas as the where it all. What we see is oil and gas as the impetus to build an economy that is resilient, sustainable, highly functional, and fit for purpose in a world 2030 and beyond. The world 2030 and beyond will be a very different world than you sit in today. It will be a very complex environment. It will be a world that will be battling many challenges. Energy, climate, food, fresh water are some of the key challenges that the world will be battling against. So where and how do we, of course, in technology, so where and how do we position Guyana in all these battles of the future? One, Guyana is the only forest in the world that is R3 certified, which means that as I speak to you, is the only forest that has tradable carbon that is certified globally, and certified to meet even the aviation sector. So the aviation sector, if they're entering the carbon market, has to have high quality carbon. The forest stores 19.5 gigatons of carbon. Guyana is the first country to sign an end user agreement in terms of the carbon trade with Hess Corporation. It's the first company to sign an end user with an oil company. It is the first company to sign in the voluntary market. 30% of the carbon has already been traded. Today, as I speak to you, we have many approaches from different countries for the trading of the remaining 70% of the carbon credit. And this uh, would earn hundreds of millions of US dollars um, annually. That is just on climate services. On ecological services and biological services, we have all the ingredients to make us number one in the world. On food security, our arable land and fresh water, our geographic lo location, position us to be the leading producer of food in, in the Caribbean and among the leading producer in the Caribbean and Latin America. That is targeting a market of more than 400 million people. Latin America and the Caribbean has become the most insecure region as a result of COVID and the supply chain crisis for food. We are next to Brazil. So the opportunity for agro-processing and value added with raw material from Brazil is enormous. So on food security, we are there. Natural resources, our gold reserves, our bauxite reserves, our forestry, we have the lowest deforestation rate in the world, among the lowest. We are not even extracting what is our allocated quota. Gold, diamond, bauxite, silica sand, abundant supply of natural resources. Historically, we have been a mover of raw natural resources. We want to change that. We now want to build out an ecosystem that moves to value added on all the aspects of natural resources. So we want the conversation and investment to be different. 
Not someone only telling us we want to sell you solar lights. We have silica sand, one of the main ingredients in manufacturing the solar panel. How can we work together to bring the manufacturing facility and produce there? How can we work together with the agro-processing technology that you have in bringing value to our production? How can we work together <clears throat> in building out the first gold refinery in Guyana? How can we work together to expand aquaculture and position Guyana as the leading supplier of uh, fish and prawns to North America? We have all the competitive advantage. We are much more competitive than Brazil in aquaculture. But Brazil has a larger market. How do we apply the technology? How do we bring you in on the oil and gas sector, not only <clears throat> in a peripheral way, but in the value-added aspect of oil and gas? How do we deploy your capital? Through a mechanism of partnership, building par partnership consortiums. How do we work with you in transforming, uh, transferring technology, bringing you closer to a market, bringing you closer to the US market, bringing you closer to a market that you never even touched, a market of four to 500 million people that we have direct free trade agreement with. That is, the, that is what Guyana does for you. Open up new opportunities, opening up new areas in which you can target new markets and you have a responsible democratic government. A government that believes in free trade, a government that believes in building a society of equity in which prosperity must come to every home, a government that believes in ensuring that our development policies are targeted to bring wealth but also uplift the poor and vulnerable to a standard of living that does not expand disparity and inequality. So the opportunities are enormous, but I don't like to talk about it. I like to see action. So if there is a plan or a project that you want, the private sector is here, let us see how we can collaborate. Let us see how we can help you. Let us see how, you know, today I, I, we spoke about uh, soya beans, for example. We spoke to one of the large consumers of soya beans here who convert it into different things. And I think the price that they are paying per ton of soya beans, soya beans deliver from Brazil into Guyana, you will save at least 35% in the cost per ton. And I would not say that we have all the competitive advantages our major disadvantage now is the cost of energy. That has always been a hindrance to us. But because of oil and gas and bringing in natural gas to power a new plant, by 2024, the cost of energy will come down by 50%. And that will make us among the most competitive in terms of cost for energy. For energy. So. I want to spend now maybe a few moments answering our questions, if you have any questions. But what you need to do maybe is to work on bringing a delegation to Guyana, spend some time in the country, feel the country. There is nothing like feeling the environment, <clears throat> understanding the environment. We, were, we are working in a new way. The government is operating I don't want to say the, uh, like the private sector because the private sector sometimes is in inefficient, very inefficient. So we are operating through a new mechanism and that mechanism is eradicating the bureaucracy and create a more direct contact, direct relationship and building consortium and partnership. Here in, in India, you have mastered the art of small and medium-sized enterprises. But when you go into the global environment, if you have 20 small and medium-sized businesses, for example, in corn production, if you bring together those 20 businesses in a consortium, then you have a large-scale company that, that can operate at a different level. So 
we want to work with you. The opportunities are there, but they are moving very quickly. The opportunities are moving very, very quickly. So time is, is of the essence, and you know, in the areas I identify, we are ready to, to, to see how we can open up the, the opportunities for you. 